What's up YouTube, what's going on guys? So today I wanna to do a video on proper uh, core mechanics and bracing when we are doing things like squatting, deadlifting, the big compound movements we do, whether it's a front squat, a back squat, doesn't matter. Anytime you got a barbell on your back or you're handling like a heavy load like in a deadlift, I want you guys to use this bracing sequence um, and properly uh, utilize these core mechanics I teach you today to go do these movements. This isn't just gonna make you lift safer. Like yeah, that's a big part of this, but this is gonna actually activate your body better. This is what I talked about in that video. Video, Jessica Revelo where a lot of you guys came over from her channel over to mine um, getting your spine in the proper position and your back out of overactivation through uh, overextension is so important to get your glutes to activate to get everything to fire properly in the body when we do these big compound movements if there's one kink in our chain the whole thing kind of falls apart so, and I know a lot of you powerlifters out there are thinking you know how to brace, but I see probably about 50% of the powerlifters I come across on Instagram and stuff doing this completely wrong. They don't understand the importance of how the brace goes and, and why we're doing certain things. So let me explain this. First off, when we are bracing, whenever we are doing any kind of back squat, front squat, deadlift, we need a lot of pressurization and stability in our core. Otherwise, what happens when we go to deadlift, we see the back round over. When we go to squat, we see people collapse over in the squat. That all comes from improper uh, core mechanics. It can also come from strength imbalances, but today we're covering the core mechanic part of it. And so what you need to do is learn how to properly brace. There's three main steps to this. The first one, what I want you to do Look at my back here. You see how it's kind of overarched out? Most athletes deal with this. This is called interior pelvic tilt, basically overextension. If you lift with barbells, you're probably going to have this problem at some point. I very rarely actually see athletes the other way, which is posteriorly tilted. Those are usually the beginners coming from computer desk jobs and stuff like that. But most guys who've been in the gym for a little bit, they're overextended. And so the first thing we need to do, whether we're posteriorly tilted or overextended, is get our spine into a neutral position. So what I want you to do, whether you have that squat bar on your back or you're getting ready to bend down to get the deadlift bar off the ground, I want you to squeeze the shit out of your butt. I always see people do this when they're lifting, but they do it at the wrong time. And they don't understand what this is doing. What happens when I squeeze my butt, look at my lower back. It goes into neutral. Get a little bit of a close up on it. See how it's overextended there? Then I squeeze the butt and it goes nice and neutral. And what this does is it neutralizes my entire spine, gets the back out of overextension, and allows me to brace into a proper position. So step one, squeeze the hell out of the glutes. Now step two, what I want you to do is while you're squeezing your butt, before you let it go, make it look like a raisin, nice and ugly, I want you to take a humongous breath into your, your stomach and your chest. You'll hear people say breathe into your stomach, that's not, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm choking on my spit here. That's not the only thing you wanna do. You wanna breathe into your stomach and your chest. You wanna fill your entire cavity out with air when you're bracing. So squeeze the glutes, and then when I go to catch my breath, I suck in a huge breath of air, and I fill everything out. You can see my stomach sticks out, my chest sticks out, everything rises with air. And what we don't wanna do is chest breathe. So I'll see some people squeeze the glutes, and they'll breathe and they suck it into their chest and then look at my back, now it's arched out again. We don't want that. You need to make sure that core remains neutral. So squeeze the glutes, big breath in, fill your chest and stomach out, puff the stomach out. It should look ugly, especially if you're using a weightlifting belt. We want to brace those abs out against it. We fill everything with air. And then from there, what I need you to do, the other part, the third step in this is actually maintaining this position as you go down. It's not just about catching the breath. We have to actually activate our core, our back and our ab muscles on while we're moving through the movement of the squat. So as I'm descending down or if I'm picking up a barbell off the ground, I'm thinking squeeze my abs. It's almost as if I'm contracting them in place. We call this an isometric hold, okay? We're trying to squeeze everything around here while we hold that breath and that's what creates the stability. A lot of people on Instagram always compliment how stable I am in my squatting, my deadlifting, things like that. I don't ever lose position even on max attempts, unless I have a really bad rep, but uh, we're gonna pretend I'm perfect, and most of my reps, they look pretty good on camera, and that's because of this core bracing stuff. So I'm gonna give you guys some real world examples to look at as I go through my lifting, but this stuff is night and day. I actually just had a client who I taught this process to, and literally in a week's time, I'll show you the before and after videos, the same exact weight, I think the weight was different by like five pounds. In a week's time, she went from having a really bad, ugly, rounded back deadlift to a very neutral back position in her deadlift because she is properly bracing her core now. That's the only thing we changed was basically how she braced her core and her setup on the bar. And all of a sudden she went from not being able to deadlift properly to being able to deadlift almost like a champ. So this stuff does wonders 
And like I said, it's not just for safety, it's also for activation. If you start pulling a deadlift and you're like this, your glutes are shut off, your hamstrings, everything's basically shut off except for your back. Your back is taking most of the tension and we don't want that. So make sure you're bracing properly. Do it as you see here, whether you're using a belt or not, we should be doing this. You wanna hold and maintain that, that pressure, that breath in your stomach throughout the entire rep. You never let it go until you reach the top and then you repeat that process. All right, another tip uh, while you're doing this, what I want you to think about when you get this barbell on your back, and this thing's actually loaded up, so this is gonna be hard to talk, but that's okay. Once you have it walked out and you're in position, I want you to think stand tall. So when you go to squeeze your glutes and catch your breath, I want you to stand as vertical and tall as you can. What I see people do wrong, especially when they don't squeeze the glutes right, is they stay kind of bent over the bar where there's like a slight tilt to them, or they'll squeeze the glutes and keep their chest down like this. You need to be standing tall as you catch and brace everything. You want to be as vertical as possible, and that's going to give you the most stable position to descend down into that hole or pick up the barbell off the ground. Okay, something to teach core bracing that I like to use with a lot of clients is a goblet squat like this. You can see Kristen's going down nice and controlled. She's using a tempo, and she's working on keeping her spine as neutral as she can. She actually has bracing issues in her squat that we're in the midst of trying to fix, and this is an exercise that not only teaches us to brace, but to tension the abs. The goblet squat, because of the position, of the goblet uh, of the kettlebell it makes the tension in your abs like go through the roof it's even better than a front squat so I really like these for teaching people to activate their abs and I'll actually have people do these before their squat sets as well um, nothing fancy just grab a, a kettlebell throw it in between your hands and do exactly as she's doing here and try to mimic your uh, high bar or front squat kind of position as you go down and the trick is to really squeeze and tension the abs if you don't feel your abs you're doing it wrong you got to squeeze them on Okay guys, I want to give you a real world example of me doing this right after I explained it actually. So you can see here I walk it out. Now watch the arch in my lower back, that slight interior pelvic tilt with my back being overextended. Boom, right there's this glute squeeze and then there's the big breath. And you can see how neutral that makes me. And I'm doing these beltless sleeveless tempo high bar squats and you can see how controlled they are every time I go up and down because of this brace. Watch again here. Glute squeeze on, big breath, neutral spine, and you can see the difference in my torso when I do this correctly. Now here's a front view of me doing the same thing, and now what I want you to look for is that vertical position. You see how tall I get before I actually descend down? Right after I squeeze the glutes right there, and I catch that breath, I get nice and vertical, and that helps keep me upright in the squat. So if you take these tips and do them correctly, you're gonna get a way better squat, way better glute activation, everything you've been looking for. And uh, that's pretty much it for this video, guys, so I hope you appreciated it. Let me know in the comment section if you liked it, and until next time, I'll see you later.